Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and today I'm going to show you how to flash an RX 6600 XT so it'll work with your Mac Pro 5.1. Syncretic, Syncretic? I'm not sure how you pronounce it. He is on Mac Rumors Forum's website, and he has created a patcher tool that allows you to patch the ROM of your 6600 XT and on up and flash it back to the card so that it will then work in the Mac Pro 5.1. Now you have to do this in a PC. You cannot do this running Windows on your Mac Pro 5.1. It's got to be in a PC. You have to install a couple of apps. Then you back up your ROM off the card. You patch it with Syncretex tool and then you flash it back to the card. And then you pull the card out. You put it in your Mac Pro. You boot up and voila. Now, you do have to have Monterey running 12.2, I believe, to get a 6600 XT to work in the Mac Pro 5.1 because the drivers don't exist before then. So all the links you'll need are in the description for the patcher and the software to do this. Let's get to the patch and flash, shall we? One thing to note is there's no power mod needed for an RX 6600 XT, and that probably comes in around as as powerful of a GPU as the RX 5700 XT. Maybe not quite as powerful, but very close and uses quite a bit less power. Anything above that, you probably either need to have the Pixlus mod or an external power supply. One more note before we get into the process, and I'll talk a little bit about this afterwards. Some graphics cards have a BIOS switch, which means they have more than one ROM. This card has performance mode and silent mode. I flashed it in performance mode and then I found out about this afterwards. Live and learn, right? I don't really personally care about silent mode and when you're running in Windows you can still use the card in silent mode, but I patched it in performance mode. Basically what that means is in Mac OS you cannot use it in silent mode unless you do the process twice. And I'll explain that after we go through the process of patching and flashing. Okay, so we're going to head over to the Mac Rumors Forum website. It's the first link in the description of the video and uh, grab the patcher tool that Syncretech has created. And it is called FixRX6000ROM-012.zip. And Syncretech also nicely created a bunch of pre-patched ROMs that people can use, but he does specify it's better to patch the ROM that came with your card. There's so many variants of these cards, so it's just a better idea to patch it yourself, and honestly, it takes two seconds. It's very easy to do. So the next app we're gonna grab is GPU-Z. GPU-Z shows you all the information about your graphics card once it's installed on the PC and uh, it's got a little share button there and that's how you can save your ROM. You just click on that and it saves your ROM. And the last app you're going to need is AMD VB Flash and uh, this will be the app we use to flash the patched ROM onto the GPU. So you can download the patcher and the two apps on your Mac if you want to. Put them on an XFAT formatted thumb drive. That's what I did for my install and then I brought the thumb drive with me and the card over to the PC. And the next step is to install the graphics card into a PC. I'm not going to show you all of that. I'm sure you know how to install a graphics card into a PC. So after you've installed GPU-Z on your PC, you now want to save your ROM. And you do that by clicking on that little share button that the hand is touching there in the picture. Uh, I didn't actually screen capture me doing that, but you get the idea. It's very simple. Once you launch this app, you will see all the information populate from your graphics card. Uh, this photo has a 6900 XT. I was actually patching a 6600 XT, but you get the idea. And there's my ROM that I saved from GPU-Z, Navi23.ROM, and I just drag that on top of Syncretex Patcher Tool and bingo, it created a copy dot patched. And that is the ROM you're going to use to flash your graphics card with. So now we're going to use AMD VB Flash to flash the graphics card with the newly patched ROM. So now we're going to load our ROM into AMD VB Flash. So I'm going to go in here and grab the Navi space 23.ROM patched. You want the patched version that you patched 
to flash the card with and then you just hit the program button and I'm just doing this as a simulation right now you can see that my RX 5700 XT is is showing that's the graphics card installed uh, so obviously I don't want to flash that card but take my word for it I did this in the PC I hit the program button and it successfully flashed the RX 6600 XT after you successfully flash your graphics card, they say it's a good idea to remove the AMD VB flash driver. So you launch the driver installer app that's part of that package. You hit U and you hit enter and it removes the driver. Now that we've successfully flashed the graphics card, we're gonna take it out of the PC and install it into the Mac Pro 5.1 and see if she boots. And this specific graphics card needs a dual mini six pin to single eight pin power cable. Dual six pin to single eight pin. Gonna give it an install, see if she boots. Fingers crossed. Moment of truth. Well, we got the open core boot picker. Well, we get the boot chime. Boot chime. Now for the open core boot picker. It should, oh, there it is. There's the open core boot picker. It's coming up on a different monitor. Usually it comes up on my left monitor, but we are in. Yes. It worked, folks, it worked. And there is a shot of the nice shiny new Radiant Sapphire. Now, over on the far right there is the bio switch that I was talking about earlier. There's a close up of it. Right now the switch is in position one, which is performance. In the middle, the switch is position two. It's silent and all the way forward is position three, which is controlled with tricks software that you have to download and then it allows you to make changes to the video card overclock it things of that nature and it allows you to switch between performance and silent mode but this is only in windows not in mac os and when the card is originally shipped it's defaulted in the one position which is the software position but when you install it in the pc it automatically is in performance mode even though you're in the one position so you could have it in the one position or the three position and when you flash that rom it is going to be performance mode and then if you want to do it again and flash it in silent mode you have to shut down the pc put the switch in silent mode boot back up, back up that ROM, and then patch it, and then flash it again. So you're basically doing the whole process twice if you want to use those two switches in Mac OS. If it's in Windows, it's going to work in software mode or with the switch in either position. But in Mac OS, if you boot up in silent mode and you haven't patched silent mode, it's not going to boot. I just patched performance mode and I don't really care about silent mode. So I basically did it the one time, but you know, live and learn. I didn't really know it had the bias switch until after the fact. So would I have done it? Probably, because my friend might have wanted silent mode. I'm hoping he doesn't. But after looking at what silent mode actually does, it just makes the fans run lower when you're taxing the GPU and you get slightly lower frame rates. And I'm talking one, two, three frames. So is it worth even messing with? I don't know why they bother. So now I'm just going to show you a couple of benchmarks compared to my RX 5700 XT. This card uses less power and I'm a little surprised at the result here. The 6600 XT takes the win in the Geekbench Metal score and it gets a slightly lower score in OpenCL. So the RX 5700 XT beat it there, but not by much. And every time you run Geekbench, you get slightly different scores. It's never the same. And in Tomb Raider, the RX 5700 XT squeaks out a win with one frame faster and a few more frames rendered. And this is running metal in Mac OS, not Windows. Okay, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me that thumbs up. And, uh, you know, we should also give Syncrotech a nice tip because 
Without him, this wouldn't even be possible. So it's amazing he takes his time and figures this stuff out. I don't know how he does it. He's obviously a programmer. I am not. I am just a lowly recording engineer. <laughs> so anyway, thanks a lot to him. Big shout out to him. And uh, one day I'll learn how to say his name properly. And uh, we'll see you on the next Max Sound Solutions video.